welcome back to Model Kit Stuff. Um, my name is Jason and this is the first video in our new build of um, the ICM kit of uh, a model, a Ford Model T 1913 Speedster. Um, just need to do something a little bit different than um, ship type builds, um, just fancied a, a change um, and you don't get much more different than this. So. Um, we're going to be building this, we're not going to be doing it in green, um, we're going to be doing it in um, blue, we're going to be using this Humbrol um, Gloss 14, which looks that sort of colour, um, so that's the plan, uh, we've got a couple of figures for it, um, I have done a um, um, a first impressions video on this as well. This will be quite interesting because um, all of this orange here uh, is actually natural wood so we've got some wood effect painting to be done um, um, and some brass to paint and, and so on and so forth and it's just as far removed from um, shipbuilding as you can possibly get so let's get stuck in. Right I have um, my sub assemblies all built up this is pretty much as, as far up as I can build the kit without um, actually putting things together. Um, and the reason I've done that is just to get um, all the seams and bits and pieces cleaned up. Just got uh, one or two bits left to do on this. Um, and then we'll start painting it and just speed up the assembly. But it also means that I can paint um, similar it uh, items with the same paint colour um, all in one hit. So. Um, the, the dashboard and the, the the floor pan, for example, is all wood effect. Um, the um, there's parts of this that are actually going to be the body colour. I've decided that's the body colour. That's the body colour, um, and then the, the engine goes in early in assembly, um, so uh, we need to paint that as well. So uh, all sorts of bits and pieces going on there. Um, like I said, this is mainly going to be blue. Um, I'm a little bit undecided whether I'm doing um, any sort of trims or anything like that on it, but we'll, we'll see. It's going to be, I think, a little bit sort of Pimp My Ride-ish in terms of colour and presentation. So I'm not going to do it as an authentic 1913 style. I'm going to do it as if I've bought the vehicle uh, in 2021 and you know replace bits with chrome and brass and so on and so forth so yeah it should look all right okay so we've got these parts painted up now um, so we've got you can see the contrast here we've got the the gloss of the the bodywork color and then we've got the satin um, black there and I've done the springs in a slightly different um, semi-gloss as well so we've got three different tones coming on gives you um, slight variation in in the look of it um, just just I think helps with a little bit of authenticity um, this will be the front suspension um, and the radiator will be mounted onto these points here um, so these are not done yet but they're they're getting there um, I have also done this fuel tank, um, so the, the top of that is has been picked out in brass um, and the Ford logo has been painted in. I've got to do some straps on this as well um, and then we've painted the main um, body. Unfortunately I've had a little bit of seepage under the tape. So we've got a little bit of touch up to do, but otherwise that's gone down um, quite nicely. So my next job is to get the radiators uh, painted in, in the brass. Um, uh, and the engine block, which I need to be able to mount these parts on. Um, and we've got some detailing work. So some of the, some of the bolt heads will be picked out in silver um, and, and various other bits will be picked out in like a chrome color just to add a little bit of um, wow factor to it all. So I'm going to crack on with that and then uh, show you what that looks like. Okay, so 
We've now sprayed the um, radiator in uh, in brass. We've used um, AK's Extreme Metal, um, which is very thin and goes straight through the airbrush without having to mess with it. Although it's an enamel, so cleaning the airbrush is a bit more difficult. Um, so what we did is we painted this black first, um, and then we masked the two radiators um, before spraying it. So I'm just going to remove the uh, masking tape now and see how we've got on. Right, so we're going to fit this radiator. So um, we can do that before we put that in. So I'm just looking at the location. Um, it's fairly positive, but when getting it straight might be problematic. Um, and then that bit fits behind it. Uh, and the fit of that is... Right, so that wants to... That's interesting, that wants to force the part open, so will the radiator fit. So the instructions want you to fit this to the radiator first, like so. So I think we'll do that. Um, so I'm just going to scrape the paint away where the contact point is. Just make sure that that glue adheres okay. Now I don't always do this. I only really um, remove paint if I'm using thin glue. If I'm using the thicker stuff like Ravel's Contactor Professional, um, the, the bonding process there dissolves the paint usually. Unless I've got, you know, really thick paint or I've used enamel or something like that, it's usually okay. So, I take a view depending on um, what it is I'm gluing, but in this instance, um, because we used an enamel brass paint, was scratching off. Um, and we'll do the same with this. So even though this was an acrylic paint, um, because it's glossy and I've given it a coat of varnish, we'll just make sure it's going to bond okay. the fit's good um, pop it on there that'll keep it all nice and flat um, and not too much glue that should be enough that will have capillaried in Leave that to dry for a minute. I'm going to mount this now onto the front of the the car frame. That I've just removed paint off the, the two contact points. I'm going to use um, the contact professional on this because I just want a stronger bond. Um, so what I tend to do with this stuff is um, before I use it for the first time, especially if I've not used it for a couple of days, is just run a a little bit of wire down there just to make sure it runs free. Um, it does tend to dry a little bit. So, just get some on the end. Just wants to string sometimes as well, so you have to keep your eye out for that. But generally, it's not a bad glue. Okay.
So what we've basically got with the assembly is that is going onto the radiator and then the radiator is locking into there. So the radiator is the, is the point that's joining these two bits together and that's just falling off while I was talking. I could tell this was a slightly weaker assembly which is why I've wanted to use this thicker glue. It's quite tricky to keep all of that straight and in the right position. So I'm just going to hold it for a sec. Right, that's about right. So whilst that seems to be happy, I'll just sit it down. Okay, we'll give that a moment to dry off. So I'm going to use um, Humbrol's 85, which is a, a satin black for the engine block. Um, that way I'm not going to have to um, worry too much about clear coating it. Um, so Humbrol paints are relatively thick paints. So they do need um, some thinning should be plenty, probably put too much in there. Um, and my basic rule of thumb for uh, brush painting or thinning paint for brush painting is um, use the brand of thinner that's designed for the paint. Unless you, you know for certain and you've tried it and you've experimented with it, I mean it comes with experience but If you've not got that experience, you're relatively new to the hobby, or you're not sure, or you want a guaranteed result, then use the thinners designed for the product, um, and then you know it's it's going to work. There we go. So how I tend to paint um, when I'm painting with a brush is. Uh, an initial relatively thick coat so um, as you can see there we've just put a couple of uh, drops of thinner in and then we let that dry off um, and then we'll thin it further and do a thinner coat and what happens and then we may well do a final even thinner coat and what happens is that um, it, it gradually levels um, the, the paint and you get, you get a, a nicer finish than if you did it relatively thick to try in uh, in two coats um, you're going to see much more um, brush mark witnesses so you need to thin it a little bit and it, it, it's better to do three or four coats than one thick one um, your end result will look a lot better um, and also you, used, you want to do the use the widest brush that's um, practicable um, to have as few brush strokes into it <clears throat> as as possible. Now when you're using, um, this is an acrylic paint, but when you're using enamels, um, the, the slower drying time gives you an advantage when you're brush painting because um, the paint will naturally spread and even out and remove um, some of those brush strokes anyway. Um, whereas acrylic, because it dries much quicker, doesn't, but um, so you have to make sure that you, you've got your paint thinned. I mean, you need to thin enamel paint obviously as well. Um, I think people have moved to acrylics for a number of reasons really. That, you know, it, it smells, um, you know, it, the smell doesn't fill your room with the uh, um, that smell that can take a while to clear um, your drying times improved so you can get more done quickly um, and um, it's much easier to clean your airbrush uh, I don't really like using enamels in an airbrush um, I did yesterday um, when I did 
that brass which is enamel and then immediately stripped the airbrush and cleaned it all with white spirit because I've had to throw an airbrush away before now when I used um, paint that I didn't realise was enamel if I'm honest. Um, so I left it in my airbrush um, while I went to do something else and when I came back I, I just couldn't get it off the airbrush so I had to chuck that away. Um, fortunately it was only a cheap airbrush and I don't use cheap airbrushes now so I worry a bit more about it. Okay. So what we can see with this first coat is that um, it's not perfectly even, you can see through it in places, we can see the, the red coming through. Um, but I'm not worried about that at all because second coat will clear all that up and we'll even it out. Okay, nearly that. Okay, so I'll give that a few minutes to dry and then we'll thin that a bit further and um, give it a second coat. I'm just going to go and wash my brush. Right, <clears throat> I think we're ready to give this a second coat. So what we're going to do is add um, more thinner to the paint. So I've add four drops there. I'll just give that a stir. So that paint is roughly twice as thin I don't do measurements and, and exacts, um, just sort of know from experience. Um, so we'll go over that. And because this is much thinner, it's not um, blocking out detail and, and filling recesses. It will, um, it will dry without hiding any, any detail really. what it should do is just even out the colour so if you are looking at this under um, a, a very strong lens a microscope whatever you'd see that where the paint was put down with your paintbrush that you've got sort of peaks and troughs of, of paint ridges of paint and what this thinner paint is now doing is filling those um, troughs in the paint which is where you can see the undercoat coming through and just leveling the colour effectively that's that's what's going on and I don't need to be too precise with this also because the paint's thinner um, I'm much less likely to leave um, brush marks so I can afford to use um, a smaller brush which just allows me to get into some of the recesses a little better than the previous brush. And that's going down really well, so well indeed that I think we will get away with two coats on the engine block. So I'm just going to go around and make sure I've not missed anywhere. Right then, we now need to look at painting um, what is the floor pan of the um, of the car. Now the instructions, if I just look at this, um, tell you to paint it um, light brown and the reason for that is that this is all natural wood. Um, now if you paint it a solid colour it, it's just not going to look right so it needs to have some form of wood effect on and there's various different ways of doing it and I, I, I do do it differently depending on um, the size of the part and where the part is you, there's lots of variety in, in the look of, of woods um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a brush painted technique um, which we will um, build up lots of different colours of layers to, to get the effect we want so I'm going to start by using um, a 
a sort of a dark red surface primer. Um, so this is a, a red brown surface primer, which um, is similar to a sort of uh, Second World War uh, German um, tank primer in colour. Um, now this is quite thick uh, and that's what we want, um, as you will see in a moment. So I'm just going to put some drops of that on. And what we don't want to do is thin it, we want it nice and thick. Now the brush I'm going to use is, I'm, I'm using, um, this is um, a number four flat shader, um, Dela and Roni. Um, but the important thing is the bristles on this are quite hard and spaced apart. What I don't want is a soft brush um, like this that's got um, lots and lots of bristles designed to not leave um, paintbrush marks. I want the paintbrush marks because the paintbrush marks is what's going to be the basis of um, our wood grain. Now this brush I tend to use for putting down thinned PVA so you can see the PVA build up there um, and that the fact that the bottom end of this brush is solid with with glue is holding the bristles apart so that's really helpful for what we want to do here. So we're not putting too much on and we're just going to drag the paint and then we're going to drag the bristles back through which should leave us the brush marks and that's going to be the, the basis you can see I've done a little bit underneath already that's going to be the basis of our wood grain. Now this this section here is um, black so I'm guessing that's some form of rubber mat so we, we don't need to paint that bit. Uh, it doesn't matter how scruffy this is at this stage because um, it's all going to help with the finished look. What is important is that you decide which direction you want your wood grain going and just paint it in that one direction. Now I don't want actually a dark wood for this um, but what I do want is for the wood, this dark layer to be at the wood grain that pops out um, underneath the lighter colours that we're going to put on. So the next colour that we'll put on will be um, like a, an orangey brown colour which will give us a nice golden look. dry um, and then we're ready for the next coat. Right we're ready to do the next um, step in this um, wood grain. So what we're going to do you can see here we've we've painted the um, red primer down and we've left the brush strokes in which gives us this sort of um, effect of, of wood grain. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go around with a fine saw, um, uh, this is a, a Tamiya etched saw blade and we're just going to, wherever the paint is a bit thick and we can't see that wood grain, we're just going to scrape some in um, and the reason for that is to give us something that looks fairly uniform. So we don't need to do it all, just where we think that the uh, there isn't a lot of um, brush stroke witness. And we're only doing it lightly, so we're only actually scratching the paint surface. So 
So where the paint has had a tendency to collect at the edges against any raised detail, we're just thinning that down a little bit. So on here you can see where I put the paint on this side, it's gone down heavier than on this side and it's heavier there. So we're just going to even that out. So as we drag the brush, it doesn't matter that um, it looks slightly different because it'll even out on the next coat of paint. And if you think that your brush strokes don't look quite uh, quite right, this is a good way of putting some wood grain in. Don't worry about all the scratch paint debris, we'll take that off at the end. Okay, so the next colour we're going to put down is this, which is um, Vallejo 7981 Orange Brown. Um, it's a really lovely colour this um, and I use it quite a lot. You'll also notice that I'm using a different palette. I tend to have one for metallics and, and one for non-metallics. Uh, just because um, if I've not cleaned it properly, which is possible, um, there's always that possibility you can reactivate the paint when you, when you put more paint in it and I don't want flecks of um, metallic paint in my non-metallics. Okay. So we don't need much because we're going to thin it. We're going to have a little bit of thick paint there which is just going to get rid of. Okay, and I'm going to put um, some thinner the palette next to it. Now using the same brush that we used before, so the one with the dodgy bristles for want of a better term, we're going to mix that. We want it really quite thin. Now this won't be our final colour, but we're nearly there. So you can see that's quite translucent now, so that's sort of what we're looking for. Um, and what we're going to do is in the same way as we did before, we're just going to brush over. Now because it's thin, it's going to want to run, but you see? So where we've got lighter colours, this is looking um, a bit stronger. So we're already losing that um, anti-fouling red look. And as we tone down that red, those scratches that we've put in and the brush marks becoming toned in but, but also quite visible. So it just gives us that look of um, a wood grain, or at least that's the hope. Um, and I, I personally think it's easier to do a wood grain effect with a paintbrush than to try and do it with a, an airbrush. Airbrush gives you too even a coverage. There are some times when you don't want an airbrushed effect. So there we go. I'll show you what that looks like. So we're starting to get um, a wood effect. So we'll let that just dry for a minute or two. And whilst that's drying, we'll get this dashboard done. So um, exactly the same process. So it's at this stage you can really start to 
change the the shade of the the wood to to whatever you want. Um, you can just you can add as many layers as you want as well. Um, so uh, if you want a, a a sort of a darker teak looking wood, uh, you might add some some rust into this orange brown, um, which will give you a, a, a nice um, vibrant ready brown colour. Or, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a racky sand out. Um, deck tan is another good colour to add. Um, I thought I had some deck tan somewhere, but I can't find it. It's not a colour I use very often. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the paint that we've already mixed. Um, uh, sorry, already thinned this orange brown. And we're going to use that as our base paint. Um, and we're just going to mess around with it a little bit till we get it um, where we want it. it. It's easier to use the same brand of paint just because we're thinning it at this stage. Um, so you've not got any issues with different paints needing different thinners. So I'm going to just add a dab which lightens that colour a little bit, a little bit more thinner. And we're almost just like laying down washes at this stage and you can see now that this is dried um, the colour's darkened as it's gone down because the, 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 the strong uh, colour we put on the bottom is, is coming through. So I think this is now ready, just give that a good get the excess off my brush. just going to lighten it up a little bit. We're not losing any of the brush strokes as we put more layers on because we're doing it in such thin layers of paint. And when we're finally done this we'll, we'll give it a couple of coats of varnish, varnish to give it a nice high gloss appearance. Just going to get rid of a settle in there. As you can see you don't really need much much paint at all. A little goes a very long way. Okay, that's that layer on. Do the same with the dashboard. When you've got the shade to where you want it, that's the point you stop. Um, and sometimes the trick is knowing when to stop. It's like weathering. So easy to overdo it if you're not careful. Okay, let's let that dry. So I want to paint the exhaust um, next and we're going to use um, a burnt iron colour for that. Um, I really love this colour. It's um, it's something I use for quite a lot of things. It makes really good um, exhaust outlets for, for aircraft. Um, it's a really good base colour for tank tracks. Um, um, and it's a nice colour for um, anything that's got hot. So I actually bought, but, um, bought this to do some burnt metal. Um, but I use it for, for lots of different things. So. What I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to paint it in the areas um, where I think the exhaust would have got really hot. So there's just one little dab there. Um, and we're just going to go in and 
we're going to paint just next to the box there. You can see I've not had to thin this. It's sort of airbrush ready, but it, it brush paints beautifully. I'm going to do the box chrome just because that'll look cool. Now, I have also a, per a pale burnt iron colour which we'll use for most of the length of the exhaust. So, this is just for these connection points of the box, which is where you typically start to see them rust. And then we're going to use it um, for this top section here, uh, the manifoldy bit. Uh, my brush is probably a little bit small for this, but it was the right size for that. And as I've got the paint on it, uh, we'll just run with it. So I'm going to go and do the um, remainder of the exhaust pipe um, and I'm going to use um, this pale burnt metal, um, it's an extreme metal colour from AK. I'm not a big fan of AK paints in the main but I have found that their extreme metal colours um, are quite good. We, we use the brass one for the, for the radiator uh, and I've also used it for the pedestals for the stand for war spike. Um, so that's gone over a black gloss and, and really looks quite nice actually. So um, this paint is um, designed to go through an airbrush, although I've never actually used it in an airbrush. Um, it do, I don't think it came with a ball bearing, I think I put the ball bearing in that you can hear, hear rattling about. Okay, so this has been primed with a grey primer this part. And what it gives you is when it goes down it looks like a sort of an aluminium -y colour but it has a slight um, yellowy tinge to it and it just looks like that dull metal colour that a fresh exhaust pipe looks like that sort of galvanised look Okay, <clears throat> I'm wrapping this video up, so let's just recap where we've uh, got to um, at the start of this build. So we have, we've built up the engine block um, to this stage. Um, there we've skipped that and we've put those on and we've done that. Um, we have built up the um, front suspension and the radiator assembly and we have added it to the main chassis. Um, we have skipped this step 11 for now which has the, the headlight bits on because I think they look a bit delicate and I don't want to knock anything off. We've then come to add the engine and that's when we've had a problem. Um, so what I've found is that there is no way on earth that is fitting um, into there. Uh, and that's because this bit here, the back section of the engine, if I can just show you, this bit here has to go underneath. Um, and then the front part of the engine, if I can show you... Um, it's, no, it's not on any of the pictures, the, but the, the front part of the engine um, fits into this recess here. And these two mounting points sit on the top. So basically, you have to go in at an angle so that that goes under there, and then you move the engine block down. 
the problem is the front part of the engine wants to make contact with the radiator um, so you can't push that down um, certainly you can't push it down without damaging the part there are, I, I tried every which way I could um, and, and it's just not going to happen so I ended up taking the radiator assembly back off putting the engine in and putting that on so if you're building this put the engine in before so let me show you once you've got this painted up how you want it because the engine is underneath this part here and is making contact with the suspension which is at the front the front part of the the radiator um, and yet your mounting points are above there is there is no way you can do that with the radiator in so you put the engine in first and then you put the radiator assembly in uh, in front so we now have our engine block in um, I'm going to have the engine bay closed so I'm not going to spend time doing lots of detail in there I've not even put the fan on um, we have painted up the radiator um, and we have painted up the front suspension so if you remember we um, we've done a different black for the radiator than we have for the um, front springs I've then used um, the chrome paint to pick out some um, bolt heads let's just add some detail and I've used the same chrome paint for the Ford logo on the radiator there okay um, we've then done the Ford logos on the foot plates in in brass so I have now done this assembly here step 14 15 and 16 um, and I have to say the fit of that is really really difficult once you've got that on so I dry fitted this to here and it went in like a dream and then by the time I painted it um, the fit was very tight and you can't put any pressure on to push it in place with that so this sort of just clips in so I'm going to suggest that you glue that in place and then put that in after you've installed it into the assembly so assemble this bit and then clip that in um, afterwards anyway um, I did I did get it in so that's all in place now um, and again we've picked out some detail in the in the chrome at the back there so that's as far as the chassis part is, is done. Um, we've also done some other assemblies. So if we just skip ahead a little bit. Um, exhaust is what gets fitted next. And that has now been painted up. So we've used um, the burnt iron, um, light burnt metal and chrome. For the box uh, i think that looks quite nice now so um, just waiting for the chrome paint to dry then that'll be ready for fitting um, we haven't done any of these other um, parts yet that, are, that go into the um, suspension and steering and the like i have started the wheel so whilst we were painting the main cab um, we've painted the blue on the wheels and I've picked out the bolt heads in uh, in chrome as well. We still have the wooden spokes to paint in um, and we'll use the same process that we did for the, the other wood parts. So can, skipping ahead again, we have assembled um, this bit here. Um, so that we could paint the wood effect um, at the same time as painting the dashboard which goes in um, shortly um, and we've also assembled these two parts here and painted them up so we have the fuel tank uh, which has got chrome straps um, brass logo brass top 
that's been painted or varnished and we have the toolbox I've got to be careful of that because then the varnish is drying on that and we've picked out the, the locks and hinges in the chrome on that so they're done um, and that was just done because they were the main parts with, with clean up at this stage um, so that's about as far as we've gone with assembly. Let me show you the end result of the wood effect. So if you remember, um, the process was to start by painting the um, uh, red-brown, well, we actually used primer, but red-brown paint um, which we did with the brush stroke streaks to give us a wood effect. We then went over that with a, a, a razor saw blade just to add some more um, grain effects where it, where it was a little bit thick and, and, and uneven. Um, so we had something as a base for the, for the wood effect. Um, we've then done um, a combination of washes um, with um, the orange brown paint and orange brown with a little bit of a racky sand added um, to give us a paler wood effect and then finally it's had two coats of varnish so we've now got a nice shiny varnished wood effect on both sides of the dashboard um, and we can see that on this lovely wooden floor pan um, so that was the, the colour I was aiming for. Um, we will paint the trim in the body colour or maybe in brass. Um, we've still got the rubber matte paint in there. Um, so just to give us an idea of what this will look like. Against the blue, that's the fuel tank. So that should look quite nice. Against there we'll have the seats there. Um, the toolbox will be on the back there um, so I think it contrasts quite nicely that that shade of wood with the blue um, and ultimately that will sit on here like that so I'm gonna call that a day for um, this uh, video um, Hope you enjoyed that. Something different, bit of light relief from all the shipbuilding at the moment. Um, and the second one will be along um, fairly soon. So thanks for looking in. Take care, everybody. Uh, and I hope to see you all soon. Mm -hmm.